This Holy Thursday message, given by Pastor Stephen Young at the Succasunny United Methodist Church, April 6, 2023. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Once John Wesley was asked what he would do if he knew that this was his last day on earth, he replied, at four o'clock, I would have some tea. At six, I would visit Mrs. Brown in the hospital. Then at 7.30, I would conduct a midweek prayer service. At 10, I would go to bed and would wake up in glory. What about you, friends? If today was your last day, you had 24 hours on earth, what would you do? I know it's a scary question, but this is not an unfamiliar scenario. Most of us have not given much thought to this question because we believe this type of situation happens only in the movie or in the books. When Jesus knew the hour was coming for him to leave this world and go to his Father, he had plenty of options about what to do, who to see, and what to say. But what did, what did he decide to do was, as we all know, spend quality time with his disciples. Specifically, they had dinner together during Passover, the Jewish holiday celebrating God's rescue of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt after hundreds of years. Imagine the biblical scene as described in John's Gospel. I'm sure you remember this past Sunday on Palm Passion Sunday, when I showed you the French artist James Tisa's painting, What Our Lord Saw from the Cross, I challenged us to consider what it means to read the biblical story from Christ's standpoint and how that changes our approach to both the biblical stories and our own stories. Now, I invite you to imagine what that night must have been like for Jesus. You know, the table has been set up. The dinner is being ready. Someone needs to wash the guest feet, but there's no one. At the moment, Jesus gets up from the dinner table, removes his robe, and puts on an apron. He pours water into a basin and begins to wash each disciple's feet drying them with his apron one by one. He doesn't exclude anyone, not even Judas Iscariot, who was determined to betray Jesus by the moment. Or Peter, who would later deny Jesus three times. What must it have been like for Jesus to wash their feet and share his last supper with them? One of the things I do every morning is to listen to a devotional from Daily Bread. I'm sure some of you are um, listening to that as well. But I, I couldn't do that uh, for the last few days since I was recovering from sickness. And today's devotional based on Psalm 91 got my attention when I woke up this morning with some headache. It was entitled, God Church Hurt. I mean, God Church Hurt. The narrator told a story about a counselor who confronts more anxiety and stress from church hurt than anything else. They experience a phenomenon called church hurt. Church hurt refers to the emotional, physical pain caused by the words, actions, or inactions of a church leader or a congregational member. We all know that a church 
is supposed to be a loving and supportive community. But sadly and ironically, it can also be a place where people feel confused, hurt, or betrayed. And I'm speaking about the church in general here. Not every Christian experiences church hurt, but most Christians might experience it at, at some point, whether it's a minor or major event. Of course, we all know that churches are not museums that display the perfect people. As someone once said, churches are like hospitals where the wounded, hurt, injured, and broken find healing and recovery. A church is not a perfect place. It's a group of sinners who need God's forgiveness and grace, and we understand this. But when church members don't live up to our expectations, especially when it comes to our own hurt and pain, it's a different story. Friends, have you ever thought about what it would feel like if people who are supposed to love and trust you fail you? What if those people are from your faith community, the ones who are closest to you, even more than your own family? They're the ones who welcomed you into this community, share the experience of worship and fellowship with you almost every Sunday. Are the people you thought you could trust? So when you experience church hurt, the pain you feel, is immense. If you have ever experienced church hurt, please know that you are not alone. And Jesus understands your pain more than anyone else because he himself experienced it. He knew that Judas had decided to betray him. He knew that Peter would deny him in front of others and even in front of his presence. He knew that his disciples would run away after his arrest. And it was the day before his crucifixion, his last day on earth. If I were Jesus, to be honest, I wouldn't want to spend my final moments with them. Just imagine it. For three years, you have given yourself to them. Pouring out your love, teaching them, mentoring them. Guiding them. With total disappointment, I wouldn't want to see their faces, let alone wash their feet and share the Last Supper with them. Why would I want to spend my precious last moment with those who betray me, deny me, and abandon me for their own safety? Knowing my time was limited, the last thing I would want to do is spend it with them. If I were Jesus, I would want to scare, scatter them to distance myself from them. And yet, Jesus did not scatter them. Instead, he gathered them. He didn't distance himself from them, but drew even closer to them. Why? Why did he do that? How could he do that? Because he loved them to the end. He loved them to the end. As it was written in John 13, 1, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He loved them as they were, embracing a failure to love him in return. His love was deep enough to accept the limitations of their love and faithfulness during the times of trouble and tribulation. Imagine what it would like for Jesus to touch and wash the feet of Simon Peter, the one who would deny him three times after Jesus was arrested. What was he thinking while washing the feet of Peter? What was his thinking while washing the feet of Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him 
or determined to betray him by the time. What was on his mind while washing the feet of his, each disciple, preparing for his final moments, especially knowing that his friends, his beloved friends would soon be shattered and scattered because of fear, because of what was to happen to him. I recently watched an Oscar-winning um, animated show film. The opening scene shows a husband and wife eating dinner at an opposite ends of their dining table. The movie opens with a couple eating dinner at opposite ends of their dining table and it shows you know, they're emotionally distant from each other. And the movie reveals what happened to them. A little over halfway through this 12-minute film, their daughter makes her way into a school building. Then gunshots and screams are heard. And we soon learn that they lost their 10-year-old daughter in a school shooting. It's a powerful story that explores the emotional aftermath of the tragedy as the, as the parents struggle to come to terms with their grief and find a way to connect with their precious memories of their daughter and eventually connect with each other in grief. It conveys complex emotions and themes in a visually striking and powerful way one of the powerful moments in the film in, is the scene cutting to the um, daughter's cell phone where she sends one last text message to her parent. Says, if anything happens, I love you. And this last message from the innocent girl is the title of this Oscar winning movie. If anything happens, I love you. The same message was shared by Jesus on the night before his death. His decision to spend his final moment with his disciples was his way of telling them, guys, if anything happens, remember I love you. I love you to the end, even if it means you fail to love me in return. Even to the point of denying me, betraying me, don't forget that I love you. I have loved you to the end. So love one another as I loved you. You might get hurt, but choose love instead of hate. You might get mistreated, misunderstood, or even betrayed, but don't give up seeking grace instead of revenge. If anything happens, remember, I love you. Friends, what is one critical step you can take during this holy week and Easter as you seek to follow Jesus' challenge? His challenge of love in a hurting world, a world stricken by hate, cynicism, and revenge. Just as I have loved you, love one another. These were some of the Jesus' farewell words to his disciples before his death. If you knew today was your last day, like Jesus, who would you spend time with? What would you do? And what would be your final words for your loved ones? You don't have to wait until the real final moment. Say it today. Say it during the Holy Week and Easter. Don't hold back because we don't know the hour. What would your life story tell people if today was the last page of your life? What is it that your life journey would remind the world of? Tonight I hope you listen to what our Lord Jesus has to say about that question. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple. If you love one another, so love one another as I loved you. Amen.